friends, I am Dr. Avilash Nayak. In this small video, we shall be discussing the nature and characteristics of self-flowering materials. As we all of us know, in the face-to-face -face classrooms, in the conventional classrooms, the teacher occupies a very important role because he has to do everything inside the classroom. He has to give instruction, he has to guide the learners, he has to motivate the learners, he has to give assignments to the learners, he has to evaluate the assignments, he has to give feedback to the learners on their performance. So he has a lot many roles to play inside the classroom. But in the open and distance learning system, the learners are separated from the university or the classroom by a physical distance. So the self-loving materials, they play a very important role in bridging this gap, in bridging the absence of the teacher inside the classroom. They combine all the roles of a teacher inside the classroom. Now let us discuss what are the different characteristics which differentiate the self-loving materials from the conventional textbooks. First of all, the self-loving materials, as the term indicates, they are self-learning. They help the learners learn on their own, become autonomous learners because it provides them all directions, all suggestions, all hints from time to time to learn on their own. They are self-contained. Self-contained means they are self-sufficient. A learner doesn't require to go outside, refer to other sources to understand the concept or ideas given in the self-learning materials. They are self-explained. That means the explanation of the concepts and ideas is very, very clear inside the self problem materials. A learner doesn't need to go to a teacher to understand what the concepts are. They are self-directed. As I have already said, there are directions, there are hints, there are suggestions for the learners from time to time. And the learners, they move from one step to another with these directions, suggestions and hints. They are self-motivating. They are self-motivating because like a resourceful teacher, like teacher, they motivate the learners, they encourage the learners to move from one step to another, to give them feedback on their performance. The learners remain in touch with the system. They are also self-evaluating. They help the learners evaluate themselves. There are self-assessment questions, there are in-text questions, there are different kinds of other mechanisms which help the learners check their progress from time to time. So they are self-evaluating. Most importantly, they are self-active. Why do we call them self-active? Because they keep the learners engaged all the time. They keep the learners active all the time. Well, how do they do it? They do it by giving three different kinds of activities. The first of them are thinking activities, second of them are doing activities and the third of them are writing activities. What are the thinking activities? Thinking activities are there in the form of self-assessment questions. These questions are of various types. They could be short answer type questions, they could be long answer type questions and these questions prompt the learners, they motivate the learners to use their higher order thinking skills and use their critical thinking abilities. Now we have doing activities. What are the doing activities? The doing activities are those activities which demand a learner to use the skills, the abilities, the theoretical knowledge is applied in these activities. These activities could be the field activities, the study, study tour activities, the practicals which are conducted in the labs, all these are doing activities. We also have writing activities. What are the writing activities? The writing activities demand the learners to make use of their writing skills. They could be short answers, they could be long answers, they could be rephrasing the concepts or ideas given in the books. self learning materials are also important because we have access devices throughout the materials. What are the access devices? Access devices, they make the self learning materials usable easily accessible to the learners. We find self-learning materials with access devices at the beginning, in the middle and after the study of the unit. What are the access devices we use at the beginning of the unit? They could be the structure of the unit, 
there could be a concept design, there is a, a set of objectives also, there is an introduction, all these things, they set the tone for the study of the unit. Then we have the access devices during the study of the unit. What are those? They are the headings, the subheadings, the illustrations, the examples, tables, figures which help the learners understand the concepts and ideas given in the unit very clearly. Finally, we have access devices after the study of the unit. They are the glossaries, they are the suggested reading, they are the summing up, that means all the important points covered in the lesson, they are given in the last part. And we also have the answers for self-check exercises. They are also given after the unit has been studied. So all these things, they make the self-learning materials important and different from the conventional textbooks. Thank you very much.